Uh, yeah, it's obviously been a challenging year. Any year where you yet to crack a win, it's, it's going to be a challenge. Um, but we've been really uh, positive about the games that we've been able to get into a really young group of players. Um, 25 list changes, it's always going to take some time to gel and with a new coaching group it, it was always going to be more of a long term goal than an in season you know, wins loss target so pretty happy with uh, the development of the players and hopefully with the back end of the season we start to get some rewards here. Yep. So three games left in 2018, fantastic opportunity to get down here to Piranha Park and support our Lions starting with Frankston uh, this week, uh, July 15th and followed by Werribee and Geelong to round out the season. So fantastic opportunities to watch our players still. Uh, in terms of the redevelopment, yeah, fantastic news this year. Back in April, we were able to lobby state government for uh, $3 million in, in terms of a, uh, a funding uh, for the project. Moreland City Council recently announced that they're matching that, so we're at a $6 million project. Still a bit of work to do there, but really exciting uh, for the football club that when it's done, uh, we're going to have a fantastic facility to be proud of. So for the rest of the season, we've really set just week on week goals, really. Uh, the coaches will work with our players to make sure that we're still tracking in the right direction. Um, it would be great if we did have a player you know, drafted to the AFL, um, but if not, we're, we're definitely still on our um, upward path uh, in terms of player development. The, the big achievement really has been our membership growth. We had 290 club members last year, which was the lowest in the VFL by a, a really long or big margin. Uh, this season we've been able to grow to just shy of 700 members, which is a fantastic effort by our administration staff who have just tireless, uh, put in tireless effort to really grow that number. So we're really proud of that. Yeah, yeah our sponsors are critical. Uh, to have the financial backing, it's well documented that we're the only, or one of only two standalone clubs without a gaming revenue component to our financial models. So uh, we really do rely so heavily on match day income, sponsorship income, and membership income. It really keeps our club going. Um, and uh, yes, we, sponsorship is, is crucial to us. Right. So we've got a, a junior football club, which in 2018, we've got two junior boys under nines teams. We're looking to grow that into 2019 with hopefully the advent of girls football here um, under our junior banner. We've got a, a feeder club for all abilities, which has both men and women playing and they do a great job. Uh, our super rules also, they've got three teams of men and one team this year of over 30s women players and they've, they've done a fantastic job in setting up a, a program within the club umbrella of uh, just making sure that people of all ages, of all abilities can continue to play the sport we love. The community. We've got a number of ways our club does that. We do school visits at the lower end in terms of grassroots, and that's both to get players into our junior program and to get the kids of the Moreland and Coburg area aware that there's a VFL team that play here against AFL teams every odd week. Uh, so we, we do a lot of school visits. We've got an OSKIT clinic. Uh, we've also got um, two major functions that we do, or two major events each year. Vicky Cleary Day, which is a standout, which has government support to raise awareness for violence against women and NAIDOC week which is actually this week on the 15th of July our team will be wearing a special Guernsey and we just want to highlight um, you know, the challenges that the Indigenous community of Melbourne uh, face day to day so we, we like to think that we do our part in the community. 